Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd make a little draw my life video to illustrate my road to becoming an engineer. Whether you're new to my channel or you've already seen some of my other videos, I think this will give some background on how I got to where I am today in my career. My path to becoming an engineer started in high school. I did well in my math and physics classes, but I really didn't know what I wanted to major in in college. I ended up picking electrical and computer engineering because I liked the electricity and magnetism stuff more than I liked the kinematics. I won't go into my whole college app process, but I ended up going to the University of Texas at Austin. When I first got to college, I was so overwhelmed, but I was also excited and motivated at the same time. I still remember my intro to computer engineering course had all incoming freshmen in one lecture hall. It was around 450 kids. I was never the best student in high school, but I felt like I thrived in college. I did well in all my classes, I loved the independence, and I was genuinely fascinated by the things I was learning. The summer after my sophomore year, I stayed at UT to participate in an undergraduate research program. What I got out of that experience was an interest in wireless communications, believe it or not. It didn't end up being my area of focus, but it put me down the signal processing track. When I was a junior, I joined HKN, the Electrical Engineering Honor Society. After a few semesters, I climbed the officer ranks and became president. Before college, I wasn't very active in many organizations, and I never thought of myself as a leader, so I'm pretty sure others never viewed me as one either. But I grew emotionally, professionally, and mentally in college, and I learned to be a bit more confident. I loved the small community we had within HKN, and I even met one of my very best friends through it. The summer after my junior year, I got my first internship at Schlumberger, an oil field services company. My project was very physics heavy and not at all related to anything I later went on to study, but I still enjoyed the whole experience and it was a really positive first internship experience. I also made another one of my very best friends through that internship program. Back in college, when I picked my track, I knew I wanted to do something in the signal processing space. I took an image processing course with a professor who would later end up being my grad school advisor. I even did my senior design project with this professor. If you've ever taken an image processing course, hopefully you know the lady I'm trying and failing to draw here. Anyway, back to my senior design project. We made an app for image quality assessment, so you hold your camera over a scene and it'll give you an objective score for the image quality. Just an example of something that could happen is if there was a huge overexposed region in the image, the score would be lower. I'll leave a link to the algorithm we implemented in the description box. I decided I wanted to go to grad school and I made a whole video on my application and decision process, so you can watch that if you want the details, but I chose to return to UT and go for a PhD. The summer right before grad school, I went to Taiwan to intern. I really just wanted a different experience, you know? Lots of kids go on trips or go backpacking in Europe after they graduate. I needed to do something I might never have the chance to do later.
I worked for a microelectronics company, but still managed to get a project related to image processing. I wrote a gesture recognition program and developed a very simple painting application that a user can control with gestures. I also had so much fun exploring Taiwan. I made a video on my experience, so I'll link that down below too. To illustrate my grad school years, I thought I'd make a couple plots. It took me six and a half years to get my degree. On the top here, we've got stress versus time. And on the bottom, we've got progress, let's call it. My three major grad school milestones are prequal, qual, and the defensive course. My path to reach each milestone was definitely not linear. So let's just start with my first year when my stress pretty much hit the ceiling. My first year in grad school was extremely tough. I took three courses both semesters, but I still tried to get started on a research project. Texas Instruments was funding a project related to surround view systems on cars, you know, the bird's eye view that you see on fancy cars that have the parking assist. And my advisor let me onto that project. I honestly had no idea what I was doing, but I was so grateful to have something to work on. During that first year, the probability course I took made me rethink my decision to go to graduate school. I struggled through the course, and afterwards I knew grad school courses were no joke. My second year in grad school, while no less stressful, was a little bit better. I was a bit more confident in my classes and I was still working on that surround view project, but I was also knee deep in working with one of my lab mates. We were working on video quality assessment algorithms, so we wanted to be able to build models that could take a video and predict how a viewer might perceive it. But before we could build a model, we had to gather data. And to do that, we conducted subjective studies and had people watch videos and rate their quality of experience. I got some of my first papers out of these video quality assessment projects and even a patent, but I couldn't forget about my own research and the work I'd have to do on my own to graduate. The summer after my second year, I stayed at UT to continue with research. My research honestly was slow going. My advisor's style was relatively hands-off, so I had to learn to progress on my own, a skill I don't think I would have developed without going to grad school. In school, we're so used to being prescribed homework and given project deadlines and told when to learn what and when to take exams. And in graduate school, I quickly learned that you really need to be self-motivated and learn to work on your own. I think one thing that held me back during the first few years in grad school was my own self-doubt. I had a lot of trouble confidently pursuing any research direction, so I kind of focused on breadth over depth. That summer, I went to my first conference to present a paper for the first time. It was a huge conference in San Diego called SPIE. I remember being so nervous to present. My third through fifth years in grad school kind of blur together. The major milestones I hit were, I got my master's in EE and I proposed, which got me into PhD candidacy. 
The summer after my third year, I interned at Texas Instruments, and this is where my trajectory started looking clearer. During this internship, I had one of the best mentors I will probably ever have. He gave me so many tips on how to put together and give presentations. I still think about all of it to this day, whenever I have to prepare presentations. I also got a paper and a patent out of that internship. It was probably my favorite internship project. Everything I was doing and learning was just so interesting to me and the people I was working with were some of the best I've ever had the privilege to work with. It was also during this internship that someone at TI gave me the idea to take my project in a more machine learning direction and to focus less on like the classical image processing problems that I was trying to use as the foundation of my dissertation. Back in grad school, I was more motivated than ever to push through with my research, and I started learning about more advanced computer vision and machine learning concepts on my own because I had no background in either. I took a computer vision course, which helped me finally be able to map out the rest of the work I'd need to do to finish my degree. During my sixth year, I think I could start to see the end. I was trying to balance my research while also trying to set up a future for myself beyond graduate school. My sixth year was bookended by two internships. Before my sixth year, I interned at Qualcomm. This project was very much in the computer vision space and I learned a lot about classical computer vision approaches, an opportunity for which I was very thankful. I also remember this being the summer I really got comfortable with Python. The summer following my sixth year, I interned at Google, but they have a policy where you can't work on anything not related to your internship for the extent of your internship. So I had to shelve my research for a summer, unfortunately. I loved being in Southern California for the second summer in a row, and my project this time was in machine learning, but more on the natural language processing side. It was definitely a challenging internship and I gained some valuable experience with using TensorFlow, learned about new machine learning models and training techniques, and again left that summer feeling so grateful for that opportunity. From the end of that internship to a little over a year later, I somehow managed to do enough to graduate. I surprised myself actually in how I was able to actually get my degree. For probably 80% of my time as a graduate student, I doubted everything I was doing and was so uncertain of my path. In that last year though, I could see the light at the end of the tunnel and I followed it. About half a year before I thought I would defend my dissertation, I started applying to jobs. Months before I started applying to jobs, I started to practice coding interview questions every day and eventually I developed just enough confidence to actually apply to some jobs. In October 2019, I landed a full-time job and I successfully defended my dissertation in November of 2019, close to six and a half years after I started, and I cannot tell you that there's ever been another time when I've been more proud of myself. And that was my illustration of my path to becoming an engineer. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button on your way out, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh boy.